a fun thing that I've done in the last few years is work on things that I'm not good at and embracing things that I, maybe I was told as a kid that I was good at. And so many of us, I think, end up kind of narrowing down our path into our aptitudes. Mm. And so it's been interesting mentally for me to try to do things that I'm not good at or that I perceive that way as being good or not good. And the first thing I did with that was swimming. I had never known how to swim and uh, didn't mind rough, you know, jumping in the water or going in the ocean. And so a few years ago, I went to Deep Eddy Pool in Austin and just started walking laps. And, uh, and I thought I was doing great. You know, I was walking half a mile in the water every day. And this is my first step. And a lady next to me, she was uh, uh, in a sleek cap and a perfect stroke was just buzzing back and forth <laughs> past me and we i i was stopped at the uh at the edge at the end of a lap just hanging out after one of my walks and uh, she looked got out stood up in her lane and said to me what are you doing and i said i'm i'm kind of working out and she goes no you're not and I said, well, um, okay. <laughs> and I could feel like getting angry at this person for disrupting my pleasure. And, uh, and, uh, and I said, well, she said, why aren't you swimming? And I go, I don't know how to do the head turning for breathing. And she said, well, get a swimmer snorkel. I was okay. And I said, okay. And then, and she said, what else? And I go, well, I'm afraid of panicking. She goes, if you panic, stand up. And I was like, okay. And uh, and then I kind of wanted to get away from her. <laughs> and so <laughs> I started walking another lap. And I knew by then that my defiance at her advice was something I needed to listen to. And by then, I'd started to be open to listening to people a little bit. So I met her back again and interrupted her this time. And I said, uh, she had finished a lap, and I tapped on her shoulder. And she popped up, and I said, what are you doing? And she said, uh, well, I'm working out for chemotherapy. I'm going into chemo. Uh, but... Uh, But, uh, God, I cry each time I, I tell that story. But, uh, I, uh, that just hit me because I knew she, she was probably dying. Uh, And uh, so the next day, I, uh, I didn't say much else to her. The next day, I bought a swimmer snorkel and a mask and uh, started to swim laps. I swam one lap a day for 27 days, which uh, 27 laps at Deep Eddy is a mile. And uh, so after a month, <clears throat> I had swum a mile, and uh, even five days after I started doing that, um, I went to the parking lot, you know, every day looking for her to say thank you. I never saw her again. I don't know if she's alive or if she died or whatever, but um, as far as my mental health, uh, that's something that's like I do every day is to swim. I swim a mile a day, no matter where in the world I am. In Copenhagen, I would walk out the door and jump in the ocean and swim past ships for a mile. And other people would do that too. It's very clean water there. And that changed my life uh, significantly because every time after I swim, I feel better mentally. For some reason, it's my, it's my prescription, and I take it every day.